friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. You'll hear my printer printing out a batch of CDs in the uh, background, sorry about that. We're here today to talk about a different little mandolin. It's called a Stradolin. It's a play off of uh, Stradivarius, I guess. Violin, but yet it's a mandolin, so it's a Stradolin. I don't know anything about this particular company. I know I've seen uh, other instruments with that title before. I don't remember if I've had one in the shop or not, to be honest. I kind of think I have. It's actually in pretty good shape. This is just a get it playable thing and, you know, improve the looks of it a little bit, but, but not spend a lot of money on this thing. They just want to have it playable. So that's what we're going to do. Looking down the fretboard, it's not only got a little more underbow than it needs, but it also has a twist. This, this is high and this is high. So it's, it's like twisted like that. It's, it's like if it's tilted this way at the back, then it's tilted this way at the front. So it's got a little, it's not terrible. It's just that it has it. The hardware is in pretty bad shape. <laughs> it's physically usable, I think, so we'll make use of it. And then the bridge is pretty clunky too, but since that looks like the original bridge, we'll try to make that work as well. I can see the camera's not focusing, but we'll try to make that work as well since that looks original. I can tell you right away these frets have a different feel to them than any other frets. I would say these are solid steel frets. They look rusty too, so you know they just don't feel like brass or you know bronze or something. They they just feel like steel, and I think that's and the way they're shaping up, I would say that's what they are. I'm filing them to try to get rid of some of that twist. I'm taking it off of this side, this side, and also that underbow, so I'm filing at the ends. Yeah, I'm sure those are steel frets. They also are protruding out the edges. Yeah, it's much better. Let me look down it again now to see if I've improved that look. It really wasn't terrible. I can still see it in there. I don't think it's going to affect the playability too much. You know, it is what it is, and you're not going to fix that cheaply. So, I think this is just going to be a learner mandolin for somebody, and I think we've got it up already in good enough shape for that. Frets are filed a little low on this one side, so what I'm going to do is reverse my normal process and I'm going to level in between the frets first to give the frets a little bit more height. This is a soft fretboard, so, and it needs to come down because there's deep grooves in it, so I'm going to take this down some, leave the frets standing up, believe it or not. I know some people would say, what a hokey way to do it. Well. You know, we're not talking about an expensive instrument and we just want to get it fixed as cheap as we can and this will do the job. I think you can see the deep, the deep finger grooves that are in here. By the time I get most of those out, these frets will be plenty tall to file. While this is definitely not ebony, it's a hard wood, that's for sure. It's harder than I would think. It, I don't know what it is for sure. I, it reminds me of somewhat of cherry, it reminds me of teak a little bit. It's really hard to say what it is. I will tell you it's hard to scrape. It's harder to scrape than average. And try another new blade. I'll wear out several new blades on this one it looks like. And that's funny because I do this with one blade on ebony all the time. This stuff's very hard. Well, I got the fret job done to my satisfaction. Now we're going to oil the fretboard down. The grooves didn't completely go away, the finger grooves. There's fingernail grooves, I should really say. 
They're caused by fingernails and they're pretty deep, but you know, I think it's fine. I do think I've got the fretboard good and level. I was able to recrown the frets. The frets are so hard that recrowning the frets was hard to do also with, it was hard on my fret file because these are steel. They're very, very hard frets. But they should last a long time. Now I'm going to just go over this whole mandolin with this linseed oil. The finish is old and dried out. This does a couple of things. It, it, it keeps the finish from drying out anymore. It, it really does get a lot of the dirt and grime off the surface too when you wipe it like this and you just keep wiping it and rubbing it. It makes it look a thousand times better. It just really does help the appearance a lot. Guess I'll take the fret this uh, off of here. I, I hesitate to do it because you can open up another can of worms doing this, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off just so I can get the oil on it better. See, that looks just so much better already. <laughs> just, and just, here's a before. And then here's an after. It just makes them look so much better. And I think it does really good things for the finish. It definitely does good things for where the bare wood is. And the thing about it is you want to rub it in good. It's, when you do it this way, you don't just put it on, wipe it right off. You rub it in and it, it kind of works into the finish better that way. Because you'll see the finish be gray, and if you just wipe it on, wipe it off, the finish will still be gray. But if you keep rubbing it, that gray goes away. And I, I call it gray. I, it, I should say dull. That dull look will go away. When I say gray, I don't know. I just I have to keep everything in context with my uh, color blindness here. But yeah, that looks a lot better. You know. And then the sides are just blistered like eggshell cracked and stuff. This will make them look so much better and probably keep it from eggshelling anymore. It's boiled linseed oil. Everybody always asks me, is it boiled or regular? I've never even seen regular to be perfectly honest with you. I've only ever had boiled. So that's all I know about. And again, this dull look right in here, where you can see the dullness, that will go away if you keep rubbing it. Just keep rubbing it, rubbing it, rubbing it. If you just rub it on, wipe it off, that won't go away. I'm not gonna take the uh, tuners off, though it would be a better job if I did. Again, it's a budget job, so I really don't want to spend any extra time for something that really won't make much difference. It would look a little better, perhaps. It is what it is. Time I take out eight screws, put them back in, and who knows what I'd run into in addition. Here's where you're gonna really see a difference, I think. There's a before look at that peg head and how dull it looks and nasty. Once we clean it up with this stuff, it's gonna look so much better. Yeah, even the paint pops better. It just looks better. It gets brighter. Because I kind of use it kind of, it's not really a cleaner. It doesn't do a lot of cleaning, but it will get rid of a lot of junk and uh, sure makes it look better. Yeah, if you took time and cleaned it first, but then that's just adding to the hourly rate, you know, you got to keep that in mind on a budget job. So I'm just trying to make the best out of what I got to work with here as fast as I can. All right, now I take just a dry towel and go over the whole thing and get it as dry as I can get it. Some of the dullness will come back when you do this, but it still looks a lot better overall than it did. Main thing is you don't want to leave any 
loose or liquid parts of this linseed oil. You want to get it as dry as you can get it. Otherwise you'll have a sticky film and you don't want to deal with that. Looks better already. It's pretty much ready to put the strings back on it. See what we end up with here. We're gonna we'll do something with this first I think. This is so bad that I think I'm just going to take it to a wire wheel and clean it up. There's a million ways to do it. Again, I'm just going for speed and improved looks. It's got rust all on it right now. It's like little pitted rust. I think a wire wheel will do just a fine job on this. You know, Scotch-Brite, all kinds of other options are, exist. And uh, I'm just going to do the quick and dirty fast thing. You can see there that we've polished that out some. I didn't want to try to make it look shiny bright silver because that didn't look like that's the way it was. It looked like it was always dark. So that's fine, I'm leaving it dark. I just knocked off the rust. Now I'm going to take some of this Renaissance wax. I've read on this that they use it to coat pretty much anything. And I'm gonna coat this metal with this Renaissance wax to try to keep it from, you know, as a rust in here. And I believe it'll work. I'm gonna coat the inside and the outside with it. It'll also make it uh, slide together better, I think. Buff that off. This stuff works pretty good on a lot of things, this Renaissance wax, I like it. You can tell it's got wax on it, it's slicker. It just looks better. Doesn't that look better to you? And we'll do the other piece with it too and try to coat it pretty well. Gets a little funky down here around all these string deals, but that's okay. We'll do the best we can with what we're working with here. That's a pretty quick restoration there of that tailpiece and didn't spend more than 10 minutes on it, I don't think. I doubt even spent that much time. Don't know how you could do it much better and much faster. I think that's really nice. It turned out really good compared to where it was at. Now we gotta find some screws to put it back together. Thought I'd show you, I went ahead and wiped the Renaissance wax on this plastic. Ordinarily, I don't do that. Normally, I don't put anything on plastic because chemicals can cause it to break down later. You know, I've got a lot of faith in this Renaissance wax. They claim they put this stuff on priceless paintings. They put it on all kinds of things. So I'm just gonna go with it and see what happens. You know, this is a real good place to experiment with because it is a, you know, a lesser expensive type instrument. And I think it's making it look really good. It actually made it transparent again where you can see through it like it used to be. So it's really nice. I'm gonna string this mandolin up with these Dean Markley. These are nickel steel strings. These are some of the lightest strings that I have in the shop at the moment. They're 11s to 39s, which is not that light. They're just kind of standard gauge. 11, 15, 26, and 39. The nickel is probably what this instrument came out with from the factory. So that's why I'm choosing to use it now. Actually, nickel strings, believe it or not, actually have a pretty good sound. So I don't think it'll hurt the sound any either. I used to use nickel strings before phosphor bronze got popular because uh, nickel lasted longer for me than, than regular bronze. Using the canopy glue to glue the nut back on. One thing I don't like about these strings is this huge round loop. It's kind of awkward. I'm just gonna take and compress the loop a little bit. I'm not trying to, I don't wanna kink it, but I just wanna shrink it down a little bit because it's awkward the way it fits on this tailpiece. Since I've got oil on this rag, I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe down this bridge too because it's looking pretty rough. As I put this pick guard back on here, I begin to see how high it was off of the uh, top. I think that's just gonna be an annoyance. It's just right up at the string height. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a try. I've got this heat gun here, and it's, 
This heat gun is uh, adjustable so that you can make it as hot as you want or as cold as you want. Wow, it didn't take much at all. <laughs> it really didn't take much at all. I didn't put much heat on that at all. And it went down and it stayed down there for a little while. It came back up though. It keeps coming back up. It goes down, but it comes back up. That's weird. You'd think that would stay. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm gonna try holding it there. It's gonna come back no matter what I do. It's just, it's got a mind of its own and it's gonna come back. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I was noticing how tough these tuning keys are to turn, but what I really noticed when I started looking at them close is how fine the worm gears are. Look how tight, how, how close together the worm is and how fine the teeth are on the gears. These are really geared up. In other words, you know, like Waverly's are 18 to one, I believe. These are probably closer to 24 to one. I mean, they are incredibly fine. Wow, I've never seen gears any finer than that. But they're hard to turn, so I'm gonna put a drop of oil on them. And that's, it's really more than a drop. I'm putting the oil wherever, any place they make contact with metal. And the oil gets all over everything, but you can wipe it right back off, and it doesn't hurt. You can wipe this three-in-one oil over your whole instrument, and it's about like using linseed oil in a lot of ways. It doesn't hurt your instrument at all. As a matter of fact, I can show you some place where I've seen Martin and Gibson talking about wiping your instruments, like your fretboards down with it and different things. So it's not a problem. I'm turning the rest of them to try to spread the oil out a little bit more. I already had the string on this one. It's getting a little easier now, I think. I'm gonna wipe off the extra oil now. I thought these would have probably been the original tuning keys, but I can see now they're not. They're not the originals, but I've never really seen any tuning keys with finer adjustments than this. I can see, if you look close, you can see the shadow of where a different tuning keys used to be on this. But those are really some fine tuners there. I've never, never seen anything that quite that fine. Well, I pointed out how fine those tuner adjustments are. Theoretically, that should make these easier to turn. They're not. They're the hardest tuning keys I've ever, and I'm stating that as a black and white fact, I've never had tuning keys harder to turn than these. I have worked my fingers to a bone trying to turn these, and they don't turn. I have tried tightening, loosening these different deals here, and it really doesn't seem to make much difference. You know, it's, they're just really hard to turn. Just crazy hard to turn. Oh, I mean, like, I'm pushing with all my might. So it's like, I'm pretty darn strong, especially at turning those things. And if I can't do it, there's no way the customer is going to be able to do it, especially a lady. So I'm going to have to call them and talk to them about the tuning keys. It's been several days that this has been sitting in the shop because I was waiting on new tuning keys. I don't remember where we left off. I do remember telling you that these tuning keys were the finest gears I've ever seen, which should make them easy to turn, but they are so hard to turn that, I mean, I really got cramps in my hand trying to tighten them up. So we're just going to switch them out and we're actually going to be putting on a fairly cheap set of tuning keys you know i think it'll be sufficient though and i think they'll tune better than these because these do not turn with a darn it's funny they seem to turn fine this way um a little bit stiff on that one but i guess it's because when this gets pulled against there it tightens them down and boy it i don't know they just don't work This is the economy set from Stumac. 
the gearing on them is much bigger it's no question about it but hopefully they'll tune better hopefully they'll fit the holes uh, that's the first problem right there now well, now they do they don't fit them great though not in the dead center yeah they actually go that way they look better that way so that's the way they're going to go and they feel like they fit the holes pretty well they come with the ferrules now these will have to be drilled out and I'm going to go ahead and do that on this I think that's going to make them turn even easier so these are pretty wallered out so I'm going to put new I'm going to put the ferrules in and I'll drill those holes on the drill press this pilot bit there's a piece of tape on here so I only go so deep that way I don't go all the way through the peg head and uh, anyway, I'm not actually going to go quite even that deep because this is a little thinner peg head. Well, that went real well, and I think we'll be able to put that together now. Drilling the holes was very easy, and now they the uh, ferrules fit in perfectly. They they go in just with a slight push, and that should make the tuning keys work a lot better. And the posts go below the gears in this case. See if they go in there. Yep, they go in there just fine. We'll put the screws back in. Hopefully we won't need to uh, work on the holes. The new screws are Phillips head, which is better, easier to put in. It looks like the holes don't even line up at all, actually. Only a couple of them do. I'll put in the ones that line up, and the rest we'll put in separately. We're not going to worry about filling holes and all that kind of thing on this mandolin. It's a budget job and we're just trying to get it done as quick as possible. The holes feel snug enough that I don't think they need to be filled on, on the screw holes. These two look like they need to be drilled. I don't see that. Yeah, definitely those two need to be drilled. Hopefully this one will go through just as easy as the other one. It's not though. Hmm. Wouldn't you know. I, you know, I thought that it looked like it was tighter on these two middle holes. I don't think they were drilled real well from the factory. That's kind of a shame. These two middle holes are a little tighter. I'm going to have to actually take a X-Acto knife and trim the hole out a little bit on this downside here to get the ferrule in a little better. What a shame. Won't fit as tight that way but we'll have to do it in order for the tuning keys not to bind. Almost enough to work. These these two it's just they weren't drilled right from the factory apparently because that might have been part of the reason they were binding too. But they were binding pretty much every key, so I doubt that was the whole reason. It's closer, it's almost working. I'm just going to have to get in there deeper and dig the hole out a little bit more. Yeah, that'll get us by, I think. It's not perfect, but it's it's good enough for this particular job. I believe it's going to get us get us by. And I don't think it'll bind because it's got the metal there to rub against so it should should spin fairly easy but we'll see when we tune it up if it gives it trouble we'll go back into it and fix it a different way yeah so the the end two holes need to be drilled this wood is soft enough that I don't feel like I need to put the wax on these screws it uh, it's very soft wood very soft I think it might be mahogany but it's I guess just old and it's 
Not very hard anyway, let's put it that way. I think that looks better too and uh, we'll do a, a real nice job for them. So we'll string it back up. Well we got her tuned up. Now you notice something about this mandolin that looks odd. See where the F-holes are? Back here is where they used to have the bridge, back here. You can see the discoloration in the top probably. But anyway, I, you know, about there, getting, the intonation's getting pretty close. I don't have it set perfectly. I'm, I'm not worried about that yet. I was just looking at the action, and the action is pretty darn high. This is a 18 thousandths pick, and it slides under there pretty easy up here at the first fret. And at the, uh, you know, like the seventh fret or whatever, um, it's a hundred, that's a hundred thousandths, and that doesn't go under there. But let's see here, my standard pick that I use, this uh, 1.14 millimeter, it just slides through there with no problem at all, no resistance at all. So that's just high too. The sad thing is the only way I can cut this down is, is to take this bridge down. And I hesitate to take it down that much, but uh, I think we need to, and I, I'm getting into more money than this thing really wants to be into is the problem. And But it's just almost unplayable the way it is. It's so high. I mean, it's playable, but it's, it's really hard to play. So I think we're going to have to lower this down. I think this is a good situation here to use my uh, tool here. I want this to be about 40, this is 45 thousandths, that's what this turns out to be at, at the 7th fret. So let's just put my gauge under here and see about where we start to have a little bit of resistance. It goes to about 80 thousandths. We'll just be conservative and call it, we'll call it 75 thousandths. So it's at 75 thousandths, we want to get it to 45 thousandths. That means we need to take 30 thousandths lower. We need to go 30 thousandths lower here. My guess, my estimate is we're gonna to have to take about 50 thousandths of an inch off the back, off of this to get it to play pretty decently. So that's what we're gonna try. Ordinarily, it's a no-brainer. You just, if you're taking 50 thousandths off of this, you just take it off the bottom and it'd be simple. But, as always, it gets more complicated. This top of this bridge is just eat up. Let's see if it'll focus on that. It's just eat up really bad, and it's wore off. I'd really like to just take it off the top. That way I don't have to make these feet match the, the thing again. Plus, there's a cutout here, and if I take off 50 thousandths, that cutout's gone. So, I'm, as bad as I hate to do it, I'm going to take it off the top. And, you know, that just makes matter, life complicated. I need to take about 50 thousandths off the top. There's no good way to, to really measure that. So what I'm going to do is go to the bottom of these notches with my pick on the one side, because the pick's 45 thousandths. And I'm just going to make a mark here with the pencil below that. And it, it seems to be doing a halfway decent job actually marking it. So I'm going to try that again here. I'm going to go on the high, on the treble strings. Try to line up the one face of the pick with the bottom of that slot. And then mark it there. That gives me an idea then roughly of how much to take off of this uh, top of this bridge. And then I can remark the strings because they're just really in bad shape anyway so so what I've done there is you can see the pencil line I'm gonna take off about that much and then recut the string slots well with any luck we did a we got it about right there we I you can see how I first of all there was a pretty big arch in this and this is a flat fingerboard so I took most of the arch out of it there's a little bit of arch left but very little and then I beveled both sides to to narrow the top. So anyway, that's where we're at. Now I can use my trusty little uh, string groove gauge here and mark this. I've got it marked treble and bass and there is a little bit of difference. I'm just trying to center it on those marks at this point. 
All right, so we got the strings marked there. And now we'll cut those out. I think that'll do. To make this look better, I think I'll just put some linseed oil on there and I think that'll darken it back up. I wouldn't say it's exactly the right color, but it really darkened it up and makes it match pretty good. So we'll call that good. Put this back under here, razor back up, get the strings in the proper grooves. Approximately there. That looks a lot lower. I hope it's not too low. <laughs> I just hope it's not too low. Oh my goodness, that would be a disaster. Well, it was another tough fight, Maul, but I believe we won. Now you notice how this is sitting forward quite a bit on the east side and on the treble side, and it's sitting way forward compared to the bass side, but that's where it needs to be to intonate correctly. The action's very good on this now. Uh, there's the seventh fret, and the pick goes in there without really moving the strings at all, and it just barely holds it. I lowered just the E string down. The rest of them are fine. Now it'll hold a pick here at the uh, first fret too. At the, that's the 18 thousandths and it. It fits in there fairly snugly now compared to the way it was before. So everything's pretty darn good on this. Uh, now I think uh, we're ready to play it. That was a little bit of toy heart. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed a close-up look at this straddled in mandolin. And it turned out to be a pretty decent little mandolin. You know, it's you know, it'd be a great beginner learning mandolin, that type of thing, and I believe that's how they're planning to use it. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so that you'll be notified of future videos. And always remember to kill a troll by pressing that like button. Thank you very much. Let, let.